Welcome to this episode of The Anatomy Guy, where we'll be reviewing the superior and posterior mediastinum. The first thing we did in this dissection was cut the clavicles so that we could pull up the sternum and look at the superior mediastinal structures. We have our two hemithorax views with the lung fields. In the middle of that, we have the mediastinum, with the middle mediastinum being the heart and pericardium taken out. Now, with this reflected up, we can see some of the great vessels as they contribute. First, we can see the superior vena cava, which would then branch into a right and a left brachiocephalic vein. Notice how the middle, uh, the brachiocephalic vein on the left crosses the midline. So here we can see the aorta, and we'll pull that brachiocephalic vein out of the way to see the three major branches off of the aorta. On this side, right here, we can see the brachiocephalic artery, which would branch into the right subclavian and the right common carotid. Then we can see here the left common carotid, and then further back, right in here, we can now see the um, right subclavian. Then it will come down the arch of the aorta and become the descending thoracic aorta. Right in this area, you can see the recurrent laryngeal on the left coming around the arch of the aorta, and here, the pulmonary trunk, if you pull that to the side a little bit, Mr. Big Hands, you'll be able to see the, the uh, ligamentum arteriosum right in here. Good. Now, the rest of the vagus is going to come down towards the esophagus into the posterior mediastinum. And we can still see our friends, the phrenic, running down on either side. Now, if we go around to the right hemithorax, we'll be able to see the arch of the azagus and some of the other venous structures in the esophagus and the posterior mediastinum. Many of these have continuity up through. What we'll do in the superior mediastinum before we shift those, we're going to pull that pulmonary trunk out of the way. And now below that we can see the trachea and right at the T4-5 plane of Ludwig we can see the bifurcation of the carina and there would be some lymph nodes in this area which would be carinal lymph nodes and then we come off to the right primary bronchus and the left primary bronchus. Also, what you can see is more of that recurrent coming up and around as it gets into the tracheoesophageal groove. And then if we pull up that trachea, now we can see the esophagus running posterior to that. Again, there's the recurrent laryngeal nerve coming up into that tracheoesophageal groove. Now we can see the, the right vagus as well as it comes in and supplies the plexus around the esophagus. Just over on this side, we're now starting to see the azagus vein and we're getting into the area right at the level of the posterior mediastinum, right in here. So everything above would be superior mediastinum, everything below is posterior mediastinum, even though we have some of the continuity of the same structures. Now we're going to go to a hemithorax view and look at the right hemithorax. Now we've got a right hemithorax view. It's a little bit dark in there. Mr. Big Hands, spotlight. That's a little better. Now what we can see here is we can see the superior vena cava with the phrenic nerve crossing right over top of that and the internal thoracic vein right over top of that and the artery right there as well. That's crossing over the left brachiocephalic vein and the right brachiocephalic vein is in here. Now if we put a little tension on that superior vena cava, we'll be able to see the arch of the azagus system. Perfect. Right there is the arch of the azagus system. Notice how it's collecting the posterior intercostal vessels uh, on the right hemithorax. Into the arch itself, you can see this little bit larger superior right intercostal vein that's going to drain into the arch. And here we can see the opening for the right primary bronchus. So we are right at this level at the T4, T5 transverse thoracic plane of Ludwig. Then we can see the left primary bronchus in here. So everything above this point is going to be superior mediastinum. Everything below this plane is going to be inferior mediastinum. Now let's start to look at some of the structures of the inferior mediastinum. What we found already is this azagous system with the posterior intercostal veins coming from the right hemithorax. Then we saw the trachea bifurcating into the right and left primary bronchus. And then we see the end of that airway. If we can retract back that trachea a little bit, 
we'll see that behind it is going to be the esophagus. And the esophagus is coming through the superior mediastinum all the way down into the posterior inferior mediastinum. And we can see the vagus nerve on the right side as it comes into the esophageal plexus. Here's a little carinal lymph node that remained. And the azagous system itself. What we can also see up towards the top is going to be the sympathetic chain. And the sympathetic chain, if we can pan our camera up a little bit, there we go, we can see the sympathetic chain running down along the vertebral bodies on the paravertebral surfaces. And then it's going to go all the way down and we start to see the hemidiaphragm dome coming into play. And if we can swing our light around and zoom in right there, good. Now we can see the sympathetic chain giving off some midline branches, which are going to be the thoracic splanchnics. In fact, this is the greater thoracic splanchnic coming off. There will be a lesser and a least thoracic splanchnic if you can do some dissection below the diaphragm here. And as we pan up a little bit more, we can now see that there are ganglia associated and we can even see these little tiny rami communicans, which are communicating from the sympathetic chain to the intercostal nerve. That's going to be carrying autonomic sympathetics out to the peripheral body wall. We can also see the neurovascular bundles in here, which is the intercostal nerve and the posterior intercostal artery and vein. Now what we'll do is we'll pull back and we're going to retract the esophagus, look at the azagous system, and we're also going to take a look at a little duct that some of you may have found in your dissection. There's our azagous vein with our phrenic nerve coming into play. Let's see if we can get over top of that with a little bit more light in there. There we go. Now what we can see here is the thoracic duct. That's the thoracic duct traveling up all the way to the superior aspect. The esophagus has been pulled up and we can even see the plexus of the vagus nerve coming around the esophagus itself. Now we're going to put that back down and we're going to swing over to the left hemithorax to see some of the contributions from the intercostals that are draining from the posterior intercostals on the left getting into the azagous as we go across. Now we're looking at the left hemithorax and what we can see here for orientation features is we can see the arch of the aorta coming across and over. We can even see the three major branches coming off of the aorta with the brachiocephalic artery, the common carotid on the left, and all the way in here with this retracted we can see the left subclavian. Here we can see the brachiocephalic on the left coming across and we can even see the phrenic coming over. Now if we pull that phrenic out of the way just slightly we'll be able to see the vagus nerve coming down giving off the recurrent in behind this structure right here which is the ligamentum arteriosum with the rest of the left vagus going down around the esophagus to make the esophageal plexus. Again, this is right at the level of where we're going to have the transverse thoracic plane, T4, T5 disc and the sternal angle. Everything below this is going to be inferior mediastinum and everything above it superior mediastinum. Now if we look at retracting back the aorta and the esophagus, and then we're going to pan down and see that sympathetic chain on the left side. Here it is, and a little bit zoom in there. There we go. Now we can see the sympathetic chain on the left side coming across here. There's our retractor. Pull up a little bit. There we go. Now we're going to see some of these posterior intercostal veins on each side are going to be coming across and joining into the azagous system on the right. Now what we can see is we have the vein that's gathering up from the inferior left rib spaces. This is going to be the hemiazygous dropping across to the azagous vein here. And then further up we have some crossing from more superior veins. This is going to be the accessory hemiazygous. And just pulled back on top of that azagous vein we can see a little bit of the thoracic duct that's been pulled out of the way. So that is the classic drainage of the left hemithorax with an accessory hemiazygous on the superior aspect and a hemiazygous on the inferior aspect. That pretty much ties up our review of the superior and posterior mediastinum. 
Make sure that you look for some of these things in your dissection, and we'll see you next time on The Anatomy Guy.